Hello, mutants. I'm Utisha, the movie goddess, and you're watching Mutant TV. Welcome back to the Fright Night Film Fest, Fandom Fest 2011, here in Louisville, Kentucky. This is Strebo with you from Mutantville.com, and I am very proud and honored to be joined now by the one, the only, Mr. Nicholas Bluetooth himself, Matthew Ewald. Hello. Well, I'm honored that you would take the time to talk to me. So, and we're friends. So, you know, I'm not gonna lie. It's like you know, we're everywhere, but. Thank you. I hope you've been enjoying the show so far. I've actually loved it. This is my very first convention. I've, um, I'm, I feel humbled, uh, shocked at a, at a number of things, uh, in a good way. But I'm just, I'm, I'm really, I'm still digesting everything. But it's, we're on day three, and it's just, it's an incredible experience. Well, at the Mutantville Mothership, the Doctors of Horror have worked hard for years to come up with a series of questions that will reveal your psychological profile, both as a horror fan and as a creator, because I know you are an author as well, and you've acted in several horror films. So, let's get started with those, the first of which is, what is your favorite horror film? It, I will tell you, but I'm going to start I'm gonna start off, and I am going to say, that's like, the hardest question ever because to be so passionate as, as as you as anybody here to be so passionate about the horror genre to love it with every fiber is I mean you love it for a number of different reasons and there's so many different branches of horror um, but I guess I would have to say right now if I'm put on the spot I would have to say Fright Night uh, you know the Fright Night it had it, it had such a serious kind of malevolence to it but at the same time it it had this humor, this humor where these the characters are so innocent in a way, but at the same time, you know, the the vampire was a was a beast. It was a sh you know it was a it was a villain who wasn't just out to kind of like sparkle or not that there's anything wrong with that, but you know, but you know it it wasn't about seduction. It was about hunger and feeding. And I just I think I was at a point in my life where when I saw it, I was like, oh, Fright Night. But I I would have to say right now, Fright Night. Excellent choice. Favorite of a lot of people. Lot Next of people. question is, what inspired you to get into acting? Uh, well, films. Like Fright Night, like uh, Star Wars. I anything as, as, a little, as a little thing, just a pup. I think what it was is you turn on a movie and you're lost in it. No matter what's happening. If you're worried about school, if you're worried about you know anything, you're lost in the magic of it all. You, know, you're, you can be... You're right there alongside your, you know, your heroes trying to escape the monsters. You're, you're right there trying to save the world, you know, battle for the fate of worlds. It's it just, I, it's what I've always dreamed of doing, and I just got fortunate enough to be able to pursue that. It's, I, I know it's, it's, it's a hard thing to say, but I think ultimately what it comes down to is to be, to be able to portray other characters, to lose yourself in what you love so deeply, I think that's that's what inspires me it's it's to be able to watch these things and say hey maybe i can join in on those adventures no matter no matter what genre horror and you know uh treasure hunting you know any any kind of whether it's mystery or thriller or even you know comedy it's you're you're living lives that you you could never live at least in this one you know it's it's that kind of thing it's you you're you're able to pull on a mask and and become the nightmare you're able to uh get yourself covered in blood and become the victim you know you're, you're living all these different adventures and it's just it's a passion of love i think inspiration comes from from everything but ultimately it's being a little child sitting down and watching these movies whether it's thing from another world or carpenters the thing you know no matter if day the earth stood still or fright night or it's just it's loving the characters loving the 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 genres and then just it's, it's inspiration. It, it's what makes you grab your dad's beer box, cut holes in it, and go on the moon. You know, that's, that's what it is. Fantastic. Now, I know your legion of Galador fans will be disappointed if I don't ask you something about Galador. So, uh, why don't you tell us about how your involvement in Galador came about? Galador was, well, to this day, it means everything to me. I, I love it as if as if I were still filming it. I miss it dearly. I miss everybody from, you know, from the cast to the crew. Uh, that's two years of your life. But I, I was, I hadn't been in uh, California for more than seven, eight months. And it was, it was an audition came in. I was sitting at Bob's Big Boy in Burbank with my father. We were having tuna melts. I'll never forget this. My agent called and says, I have something I think you were meant for. 
and of course he's my agent, so he thinks I'm meant for everything. Um, and, and I was like, and I agree with you, it's fantastic, what is it? And he started telling me what the breakdown was, and the character breakdown, and I was instantly, not to sound like a cliche, but I was lost in it. I was like, please send, fax me what you gotta fax me. I went on my first audition, and it was the best audition I've ever had. I was so, not arrogant, not confident, I was just, to have the chance to, and I was, I was young in my career. And I was thinking to be able to sit down and to, to say I'm a, I get to play a half-human, half-alien prince with superpowers. I mean, what's better than that? Just to have an opportunity, a chance. And so I auditioned uh, seven times in California. My last audition in California I read with, uh, uh, which is weird, but seven and 17 different girls. And then I was flown up to Montreal, did wardrobe, did a chemistry test with Mary Margaret Sabongi, who played Allegra. And, uh, and it just, it was offered. And... It was offered in a fun kind of shocking way because they knew I had only done one. F uh, I had done a commercial in one film uh, before that, uh, and I did that. I landed the commercial my first three weeks, and then the film shortly after, and then I landed the series, and that was that was the dream. That was no matter, and I can say this to this day, but no matter what happens, if it all ends tomorrow, I have achieved. I would, I would love to do more, of course, more roles, more characters, but I've achieved everything I had ever dreamed of as far as that, wanting to act. So that's Galador. I love it. You know, it's it's still, I'm, I'm humbled by how many people actually come up and love it still. And it, and it meant something to them as children, and it, and it means something to this day. And it's, I, I'm glad that it's still alive and that it still means what it does. And it is still very much alive. I've noticed you have a very rabid fan base. Uh, they're very supportive of you and anything you do. And even though the show itself is frozen up, um, not available on DVD, it does have some life on YouTube, so people can still relive it and and discover it there. So I recommend uh, to, to you fans out there, definitely check it out there. And you hardcore fans, that's where you can go find your episodes that you're looking for. Um, now, you are a man of many hats. Not only are you a phenomenal actor and, I don't say this lightly, but the most amazing actor that I've had the pleasure of working with, um, but you're also, you're also an author. So how did, um, how did this come about that you started writing books? And tell us what the books are. Uh, well, how it started was I always, there was, there was, two things I've always wanted to do with my life. I always wanted to be an actor, and I always wanted to be a, a published author, a professional author. Um, for as long as, I mean, I used to write uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle stories, and of course, have everything horror related. So it's like there was, uh, you know, boogeyman in the sewer, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but the, it just, it came from loving stories and saying, well, they're not doing a story that I want to see right now. I would like to I would like to uh, write it, and I'm not gonna lie. It was it was a very long and hard road. It was, I I writ I writ, I'm illiterate. Um, I wrote my my first novel, Human Nature, uh, the first draft, and I'm not ashamed to say it was atrocious. I mean, it was. I had a lot to learn, so I went back and I told myself if I could sell 13 short horror stories, I would feel confident enough to start my novel. And if I didn't get it published, fine. But at least I fought to earn it. At least I fought for it. And there's no no regrets. And I just I got lucky that I was I I met a, a gentleman who's a, a five-time Bram Stoker Award nominee who was gracious enough to to say, may I read it and may I give you constructive criticism? And I was like, absolutely. And he he kind of helped mold uh, what my strengths were, what my weaknesses were. My second novel is my my great one. That's the one that I'm, I, I feel, I'm so proud of my first, but my second one is like my, as corny as it sounds, my love letter to the horror genre. I love it, it's called Whispers in the Cries. Uh, I, went, I went and stayed on the Queen Mary, which is part of where it's based in the story for four nights. I researched, I wanted to honor the legacy and the history, but it's my, if human nature was my psychological thriller, this is my supernatural horror story. And it was, I'm very proud of it. It comes out this winter, uh, 2011. You can find it on Amazon, in stores, Borders, uh, Barnes & Noble. It's, go to uh, blackbedsheetbooks.com. You can find it. But it's, regardless of how well it does, it's, it's my passion project. It's the one that I, 
I try to devote myself to every project I do, give it my very best. But with with whispers, it was, I was, I was the character on the journey because I experienced such a j- great journey when when writing it. So it's corny to say, but it 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 means a lot to me, and I I think. I think, or I hope, that fans of horror will will see where the inspiration and and the love for the genre comes from. I think so because um, I've always in awe of your craftsmanship as an actor, and I can definitely see your passion that you bring to everything you do. So I'm sure this will cross over into your novels, and I'm very much looking forward to checking them out myself. Um, are there any upcoming projects that you want to tell people about? Yeah, there's. Um, there's unfortunately some that I can't talk about, so why even bring it up? But uh, just so I am working, I'm still here. Um, but yes, I, uh, I recently uh, completed production on Plan 9, which is a remake or a re-imaging of the 1959 Edward film. Um, in August, I'm going to be a part of, a, of an anthology kind of thing called the Lovecraft Chronicles. Um, in September, there's a theatrical film called The Singularity, which is a very almost intellectually haunting story it's about it's like what if what were what were the scientists thinking right before they said let's create a terminator you know let's create skynet so it's it's a very smart story in uh november i begin uh quite a journey which is one of the ones i can't talk about but let's just say that um you know i'm very humbled i'm very honored and i don't i don't use those words lightly you know me i don't use those words lightly but and and the thing that I'm hoping for is that I can work with Mutantville again because I no I, and I mean this and please everybody in comments go ahead and comment all you want, but the truth is is that it's become a family. I respect you were talking about inspiration. Well, you get filmmakers who are passionate; they are the inspiration because they are doing what large studios, some of them, not all, but are not doing, and they're creating magic again they're bringing uh they're giving the darkness something to fear again and that's i don't mean that to sound like a tagline but you you know projects are written for the right and true reasons it's not about profit if it happens fantastic but it's not about profit over product uh scarecrow at midnight i am extremely extremely proud of i had a chance to do something that i've never done before which is act through nothing but movement and and i'm hoping that i i honored uh the, the people that I used to watch who said nothing but terrified you with everything, you know? Um, I was, uh, it was grand to be a part of Indigo Child, uh, Brent Bowers, uh, writer and director, and that was an amazing experience, a great tale. Uh, I just, I think ultimately it comes down to I want to work on projects that I'm proud of and I want to work with people who are not only passionate but who are talented. And not just talent, but talented in a way that deserves to be known and seen. And I am, yes, I'm a part of Mutantville, but there's a reason I wanted to be a part of Mutantville. And hopefully that says a lot. So. Well, thank you very much. We're very honored to have you join us, Matthew. And uh, we're looking forward to doing many more great things with you. Uh, we actually have a plan for a web series that we're talking about right now, but we can't tell you about it, so I shouldn't bring it up, but I'm going to just to tease you. <laughs> but tell, tell your fans where they can, uh, where they can go to, to keep up with the latest news on Matthew Ewald. Uh, official website is in the works. Um, right now, try, find me on Facebook. You know, look, at, look at albums, look at things that I've been a part of. I'm very honored to have been a part of you can see behind the scenes photos and pretty soon there will be a matthewewald.com or something soon but and as always follow mutantville because i'm always with you guys so in spirit and in heart it just sounds so corny but it's true but that's that's where you can find me or you know make an offer cast me you never know i need to eat And so do we all. Thank you, Matthew. It's been an absolute honor and a pleasure to talk to you here. I really hope you enjoy the rest of the festival. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.